everyone. Welcome. I'm James Milan, and this is a, an episode of our series, Town Meeting Matters, where we um, prepare and, uh, and provide information for town meeting members and for the Arlington public in general around things that will be coming up uh, in town meeting. And we've got a number of Warren articles, as always, on the agenda for this town meeting coming up and with us to kind of walk us through some of the main ones is our town manager, uh, Adam Chapdelaine. Um, Adam, you know, you, you are a voice of authority on these things, I think. So uh, we appreciate your taking the time to be with us. Of course, my pleasure. I'll, I'll do my best. Appreciate it. Um, we won't go through all 25 of the Warren articles. Um, but uh, we will take uh, several of the either more significant, the higher profile, et cetera, ones. And speaking about high profile, I'd like to start, I know that there are a couple of Warren articles and they're dealing with very different aspects of policing in Arlington. Um, but um, I wanted just to ask you about those first. Mm -hmm. um, if you can explain the, the, the two Warren articles dealing with police matters. Of course. So there, the, I would say the, the primary article dealing with policing is around uh, establishing a study committee to look at some type of either civilian review or civilian advisory uh, committee. And that was filed by a group of residents back in the spring. And as part of the select board's commitment, the select board refiled that on behalf of the residents for this uh, special town meeting. Uh, some slight changes were made uh, in cooperation with the article proponents. Uh, just to, I would I think I would simply describe it as to make uh, the, the potential scope of what's recommended the town meeting a little more broad than what had been uh, what had been put forth in the spring. And that was that was a, a nice effort between the residents, town council, and some members of the board. So ultimately, what the board voted on uh, was favorable action to create a study committee uh, that would look at the potential establishment of some type of third party or independent. Uh, board that could receive complaints about the police department, but also for this study committee to look at various policing models and police staffing to be able to come back to town meeting um, in the future and advise as, as to whether or not a new body should be created, or if this body finds that there should be other changes made uh, to the way we police in Arlington. I think there's you know certainly a lot of opinions on all sides of this matter, uh, and I can't obviously speak for each individual member of the select board, but I think the general sense, um, the general sense from the board is that we're proud of the Arlington Police Department for the good work that they have done for a long time and the good work that they continue to do. But we've been at a moment in this nation uh, also for a long time where um, making sure we're doing our due diligence to analyze and study the way we police and potentially the way we receive complaints about policing is a worthwhile endeavor. And now certainly speaking for myself, I don't see it as any indictment of the Arlington Police Department. Uh, I see it as a recognition of the need to have these discussions in Arlington. And frankly, I'm sure it's a discussion, I know it's a discussion that's happening in many communities across both Massachusetts and the nation. So uh, well, again, what would be established if town meeting voted favorably on this article is a study committee. It wouldn't actually establish a civilian review board or make any changes, just a committee that would study and have to bring something back to town meeting at the latest uh, by the annual town meeting of 2022. Certainly could bring back recommendations sooner than that, uh, but we wanna make sure that the reality is working on such a complicated matter and bringing something back by the spring of 2021 is probably very difficult to do. Could be some recommendations that come forth sooner, but um, the entire analysis will likely take longer. And frankly, the entire community engagement that will be required will take longer. Uh, so we'll have a broad and diverse membership uh, on this committee if, if put together representatives of both town government and the community, the police department and the community. Um, and hopefully it will be both a committee that in and of itself works uh, very well together to tackle these challenging issues, uh, but also engages the community to make sure that we're, we're doing the best we can um, based on how Arlington wants to be policed. 
Okay, yeah, I just had one quick question before you move on to the other Warren article um, related to the police. And that is, uh, yeah, you mentioned the composition of the committee is a, is a cross section of uh, different folks um, or different representatives of different bodies in town. Um, and my understanding is that it will be 10 members of the committee, seven of whom will be voting members. Uh, and then the other three uh, coming from, you know, the police department and other, other uh, representative agencies. Um, uh, but how, how, how were those, to the extent that you, you know, how were those uh, the, the seven voting members, uh, how, were they, how were they chosen? And can you give us an idea of, you know, perhaps not cataloging all seven, but just an idea of some of the groups that are going to be uh, represented there? Yeah, absolutely. So the initial proposal was made by the article proponents, uh, so made by community members. Uh, and then feedback was given by the select board on either changing, uh, changing the way the membership looked. Right? And I think a few uh, potential members were added at the recommendation of some of the select board members during the hearing for this warrant article. So that's sort of the how, how, how we got there. And we're looking at having town meeting members be part of it, members of the Human Rights Commission and other committees in town. Uh, so we're, we're trying to take from, I, I think the idea was to take from established groups that have knowledge and expertise about how some of these things work, uh, as well as having an opportunity for people in the community who maybe have had their voices marginalized in the past to be able to be part of this uh, discussion as well. So again, I, I think there will be a good balance between people that are already familiarized with town government and others who might not be so familiarized with town government, or at least not with the inner workings of the police department. Um, and hopefully that will be a good balance that can uh, create an engaging dialogue. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, the other article um, related to the police has to do with something very, very different. Um, but uh, that's going to be a potential new role for retired police officers. Go ahead and ex explain that, please. Yes. So this this is certainly separate from um, the article we just talked about. But uh, via collective bargaining uh, a couple of years ago, or, or maybe better part of a year ago, um, the town agreed uh, via uh, via my office to bring forward a request to town meeting and ultimately to the legislature to allow retired police officers in Arlington to work traffic details. It's a common practice in many other municipalities, um, but I actually don't know the history of it entirely, but was never something adopted in Arlington. And really what this will do is, is just deepen our ranks to allow for traffic details to be filled. Right now, when a traffic detail uh, goes unfilled in Arlington, it can often go to police officers from outside of Arlington. So we regularly have police officers from surrounding communities that come in and perform traffic detail work in Arlington. Uh, I feel pretty strongly that uh, with no, nothing untoward to be said about those departments or officers, but I'd rather have officers that are under the command of Chief Flaherty um, policing in Arlington, even if it's a traffic detail. Um, and I think it will take a little bit of pressure off of our own officers for feeling like they need to feel, uh, fill every detail. Um, I know officers certainly will continue to feel, uh, fill details um, as that's an, uh, an a significant part of their earning, but, um, but I think it will take a little bit of pressure off them knowing that there's a, um, you know, more of a force behind them that can take some of these details. And I also know completely separate from the police department, um, often, especially in the summer months, when we're, we are trying to get a lot of work done as the town, the utilities are trying to get a lot of work done, it's tough to fill these details. You know, sort of the, the overlap of the construction season and the vacation season uh, can create this situation where we don't, oh, we're not always able to fill details and that can make it hard to get work done. So if we have a deeper pool of people who can fill these details, I know, again, separate from the police department, other departments will be able to get work done more effectively. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I know that there are a number of restrictions. I looked at the, the, the Warren article long enough to, real, to, to see that there are a number of restrictions as to who would qualify and what it is that they need to, to do. Um, and my understanding is that one of those that, are, that seems significant to me is that it's got to be uh, retired officers um, for, with less than five years um, off the force. Um, at yes. This yeah, I, I mean, we want to make sure that these are um, retired officers who are capable of performing the duties we want to be performed uh, by a traffic detail officer. And so, yeah, there, there are, yeah, we're, we're making sure that the people we're putting forth are fit. 
And let me just clarify one last thing, and that is um, my understanding from uh, from reading the article is that they will have the ability. Uh, these special officers will have the ability to operate just like police officers in both the detail, the 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 things that are predictable within a detail, um, and then anything else that might arise. Correct. They they will have police powers while working these traffic details. They won't be working doing shift work or working police overtime. But when they are in a detail, if there was a situation that arise that required a police response, they could be utilized in that regard. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that clarification. Um, moving on, there is a, another Warren article that is um, basically meant, uh, as I understand it, to set up a trust fund to apply or to support uh, affordable housing. Um, I have a couple of questions about it, but why don't you explain it first? Sure. So to take the words of Director of Planning and Community Development, Jenny Raid, at the select board meeting on Wednesday, um, I think nearly everybody agrees in Arlington that we need more affordable housing. How we do that, uh, where it should go, uh, the level of density uh, required to achieve it, significant disagreement in the community, but yet I, I certainly have heard over the years uh, almost universal agreement that we need affordable housing. Uh, what this will do is allow us to create uh, a pot of money that once it's capitalized, and to be clear, this proposal does not capitalize it. We're not, asking, we're not raising new money or appropriating money. It just creates the vehicle. But once available, this will give the town more flexibility to be able to incentivize, uh, assist, or create affordable housing. Uh, whether it be with a private developer who is working through the process of inclusionary zoning with the ARB, uh, or with our existing Community Development Corporation, the Housing Corporation of Arlington, or potentially even with the Arlington Housing Authority, um, this will give us a pot of money that won't have to wait to go back to a town meeting for appropriation or wait for CDBG funding or a future uh, grant application for CPA. Uh, so it allows us to be more nimble and hopefully more effectively create affordable housing when opportunities arise. Okay, so uh, you mentioned that it is just that this proposal is simply to create this vehicle. Correct. Um, and that it is not being capitalized within this proposal. In other words, mon no money is being promised or supplied at the moment. Correct. However, if it's gonna, if there's gonna be any effectiveness to it at all, money will have to be uh, invested. And so I, are we to assume that that will be a separate uh, warrant article at some point, how to capitalize it, or, um, you know, I think people are, are going to be interested to know, okay, let's say we create this thing, and we all agree that it, that it, um, it merits, uh, you know, being here, um, but how are we going to fund it? Oh, is that more money out of my pocket? Uh, many people might wonder. That's a completely fair question. And I think the first thing I'd say is this, the creation of this vehicle does not, pre, uh, does not absolutely mean future funding happens, right? So that the town meeting will still have the discretion to decide what type of funding to put into this fund. Uh, one possibility in the future is that Community Preservation Act, CPA money could be put into this fund they could decide they wanna put some amount of money into this trust so that this trust could be then more nimble again to um, incentivize or create affordable housing. That's one, and that's not that wouldn't be a new source of money. That would be an existing source of money that a portion of which is supposed to go towards housing related matters. Uh, another possibility is there could be a general fund uh, capitalization. We could look at whether or not either from the operating budget or capital budget, there is some amount of money that we want to set aside to put into this fund. I'm not proposing that in this conversation, but that's something we could look at. And that also wouldn't necessarily be a new uh, amount of money that we're asking for residents to contribute. I'd say the third possibility uh, would be the creation of a new fee or transfer tax. Uh, there's been a lot of talk in the state about creating a real estate transfer tax. Uh, places like Arlington and in Metro Boston, people are selling their homes um, for significant 
I hate to use the word profit, but for significant gain, um, depending on how long they've owned the property. So there's been an idea circulating around creating a transfer tax that would then go towards producing affordable housing. And there was a discussion in the spring about creating such a transfer tax. Obviously, with everything else that was held off, that was held off. Um, we decided not to bring that forward for this special virtual town meeting, but we'll likely consider bringing that forward in the spring as well. And that could serve as a pretty significant capitalization uh, tool for this fund in the future. So I guess to start, uh, to finish where I started on this, um, this proposal alone does not bind the hands of future town meetings to fund it or to spend more money. Um, but certainly as I laid out, there are there's some existing pots of money or potential future pots of money that we could like look at to capitalize the fund. And that makes sense. Last question on this topic, and that is um, there is no language in the current Warren article. And again, you've made it very clear that all this is doing is creating a vehicle. Um, but what about oversight? Uh, assuming it is created, assuming it is funded, um, you know, how do, how do you figure out oversight of a fund like that? So with, along with the fund, it goes a creation of a committee. Uh, that would provide the oversight on the expenditures of the fund. So it would not be solely staff making these decisions. Uh, additionally, there would be uh, regular reporting requirements to the select board, uh, as well as potentially back to the finance committee and even reporting back to town meeting on the, the activities of the fund. And if I recall correctly, the fund would have the, would have the potential to borrow money, but would only be able to do so with the authorization of the select board. Uh, which is which is I think a critical oversight tool. Um, so I think there will be um, there will be adequate transparency and oversight available via via both the fact that this will be a public body that has to publicly post their meetings, as well as their connection to the select board in that regard. Okay, um, a real staple of yours and my conversations over the years um, has been. Uh, Arlington as an environmental innovator, I would say, as a green community, as uh, one that is committed um, in a very profound way um, to making effective change um, in the area of, of, of environmental protection. Um, so there is a Warren article uh, proposed having to do with fossil fuel infrastructure. Go ahead and explain that, please. Yeah, absolutely. So there's been a movement in the state over the past couple of years to try to find the right way to start moving uh, homes off of fossil fuels and onto electric heating sources. And the first reaction to that is often electric heat. Like electric heat's terrible. It's inefficient. doesn't really create a good comfort level in my house. And I think the, all of us of a certain age have that understanding of electric heat. But electric heat has changed. There are new technologies that don't have the same challenges as sort of the old electric coil heating uh, that had been utilized uh, you know, decades ago. And the reason that getting on electric heat is being promoted is that uh, by statute, the, the grid where we get our electricity is becoming more green. So based on the renewable portfolio standard, uh, the amount of green energy on the grid has to go up every year. It used to go up by 1%, I think we're at 17%, of the grid right now is green. I might have that number off by one or two percentage points. And now every year between now and 2030, it's gonna go up by an additional two percentage points. So the grid is going to become greener. So if you're heating your house with electricity, you are gonna to move to becoming greener and greener and using less and less fossil fuels. So what, what some communities have tried, um, and I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit, is banning the new installation of fossil fuel infrastructure in homes so that we would really be um, forcing this electric heating and cooling to be included in either major renovations or new homes mm -hmm. uh, in communities. And that would be sort of, again, a, um, a mandated greening of, of, of heating equipment in, in people's homes. So Brookline tried to do this in the spring, uh, actually in the winter, and, and then it, it bled on through the spring. By bylaw, they tried to ban fossil fuel infrastructure by bylaw. And as we know, the attorney general has to approve bylaws that towns approve. And based on the attorney general's office review of the bylaw, they did not approve it. 
they, they actually went to great lengths to explain that from a policy perspective, they support it, but that based on their review of how it interacts with the, I believe both the statutes and the constitution, they couldn't, maybe not the constitution, but at least statutorily, they couldn't approve it. So that made Arlington and a number of other communities as well as Brookline pivot to figure out how to achieve this. So what we are bringing forth, and I, I should say this is a, this is a resident led effort. Um, Ken Pruitt, the energy manager has been working very closely with them. And, and I know I, I've been talking with them a lot um, as, I'm, as, as I've been very interested in this effort as well. Uh, but what's being brought forward is instead of a local bylaw proposal, a piece of home rule legislation. So what we'd be saying is we'd be asking the state to pass a law that would pertain only to Arlington that would allow us to adopt a bylaw to restrict new fossil fuel infrastructure. And uh, we, we don't know how well this strategy will work, uh, but we, at least from the possibility of whether or not the legislature will pass it, but we do know that from a legal perspective, if the legislature passes it, we will be able to then adopt a bylaw to achieve this goal. A couple other important things to mention is we are only attempting to, uh, to restrict new fossil fuel infrastructure if you are doing a major renovation to your house or if a new home is being built. We are not forcing any existing homes to change the way they heat or cool their homes. Um, if you're only doing a minor renovation, uh, we, we're, not, we're not gonna make you rip out your boiler. Um, so just, just to, to ease people's fears about this, um, you know, some, some folks might think we're not going far enough in that regard, but, uh, but we are not doing those things. Um, there would also be certain dispensations for uh, commercial cooking for restaurants. Um, if they were being built anew uh, to make sure that we're not limiting the ability for economic development and, and restaurants to be able to flourish in Arlington. So we're, we're very hopeful that town meeting will support this and that eventually the legislature will support it. And we're, we're hopeful because it's, it's a good measure in and of itself. And it's also a key part of what we want to achieve through our net zero plan to try to achieve net zero status by 2050. Um, so I think I've gone a little bit, uh, gone on a little bit on this one, but I, I think that is a, a decent synopsis of what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I think just one last point of clarification, you referred a couple of times to they as that, that them being the authors or the kind of instigators of the argue, uh, of the of the article. And that's the, um, the the Clean Energy Future Committee, I believe, right? So the Clean Energy Future Committee, which is a town body, it supported this. And I believe it's their name oh, that see. says, uh, you know, inserted on this warrant at the request of the Clean Energy Future Committee. But the real engine behind this effort uh, is a group called Clean Heat for Arlington that is helmed by Pat Hanlon, Ann Wright, and Amos Meeks uh, in no particular order. They're all awesome and they're all working very hard on this effort. Um, I know Brucey e. Moulton from Sustainable Arlington has also been working very hard on this. So there's a real, there's a core group of committed citizens that are doing a lot of brain work and legwork on this issue in cooperation with Ken Pruitt, the town's energy manager. So there is uh, that, that's a lot of they, but I think it's good that we have a lot of they that are putting their effort into this. Great, thank you very much. One last uh, our Warren article to ask you about today. Um, and that has to do with a, uh, <laughs> I think a, a public service uh, that touches literally everybody in Arlington and um, that the, the changes uh, are going to be visible uh, to everybody in Arlington because so much happens around the DPW building and in the yard, that being the Department of Public Works and there are changes afoot. Um, so I'll ask you once again, just to explain. So we are coming back to town meeting to ask for further capital funds uh, to get to the amount of funding or budget that we think we need to do the entire DPW yard project. Um, we're, we're really shifting or have shifted now over the past couple of years from what we're trying to do uh, becoming more of a municipal campus than just a DPW yard. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that as we were making decisions about the high school, uh, we moved the information technology department to this new DPW facility out of the high school. We took out of the high school the facilities department and are putting it in this DPW facility. And as I think most people know, inspectional services is already housed in the DPW facility. So we're really trying to outfit 
space for four critical town departments uh, as part of this project. We also had uh, this project also, I think was appropriately slowed as decisions were being finalized about the high school so that we could design the final product so that sort of the two Lego pieces came together appropriately in the right. adjacent I mean, sites. Just let, make sure that people, everybody understands, I'm sure they do already, these two, these two pieces of property, the high school and the DPW yard abut each other. Yeah, they, they, they abut each other now and they will abut each other when they're done. Um, and there isn't, there isn't really a ton of interaction between the two sites, but there is this connection between the two sites, especially with an aspect of the high school being a new parking lot put on the practice soccer field that will connect with the DPW parking lot that will be put on the other half of the practice soccer field the existing practice soccer field. So there, there were, you know, not to get into the nitty gritty, there was a lot of details to work out in the, the safe and appropriate way to create that connectivity. Um, and I know I, I had to manage some challenging situations through all of this, but making sure the high school was prioritized was something I think we all ultimately agreed to. And so de finalizing DPW's decisions once the high school was finalized is the path we took. Mm -hmm. So ultimately the combination of a little bit more time going by, uh, the addition of new departments moving to the facility, as well as um, accounting for contaminated soils uh, underneath the facility that we, we knew were there, uh, as well as changing our construction delivery model from a traditional design bid to a construction manager at risk model, all have collectively um, produced a project that is going to be more costly than what we originally estimated. So we are coming to town meeting to ask for an approximately, uh, approximately $8 million more uh, to be able to fund what we think the construction costs will be. We don't have bids in hand yet, uh, but we've gone through a round of cost estimates and believe we have a good handle on what the project costs will be. So I, I do believe this is a critical project uh, to the town. Um, you, you sort of said this in your intro that the DPW touches everything and unfortunately is often maybe the most underappreciated department in town, um, only because they do much of their work invisibly. Uh, you know, they, they don't have loud um, sirens uh, on, their, on their vehicles, no, no insult intended to those that do. Um, but yeah, yeah, they, they, they really do work and, and keep a lot of things in town running and have done so through the pandemic. But, but that aside, the existing facility is outdated, outmoded, insufficient, and, um, and, and, and really to some degree, this facility was really the next one in line after major investments have been made in all three fire stations, the police station, um, schools across the town. This is really what the next one that hasn't been, uh, I don't believe invested in since maybe the late seventies in any significant way. Um, so it, it is, I think it's, it's time, the time is now um, to make these investments and really, and really bring them up to the 21st century. Um, I had mentioned at the outset of our conversation today that you are uh, the or a, at least, at least a voice of authority uh, on these matters, and you have proven it in spades <laughs> once again by providing a, uh, you know, very comprehensive, but also quite a deep dive uh, into a number of these questions. Um, we do want to acknowledge um, to you, the audience, that we did not cover all of the Warren articles today by any means. Uh, there are 25 of them, as I mentioned. Um, there are a number that deal with zoning. There is, you know, there are a number of, of different ones that we just don't have time to get to within this conversation. Um, you can, uh, I would invite you to uh, go to ACMI and uh, ACMI's website at acmi.tv um, over the coming weeks, if you wish, um, where we will be uh, lodging videos that are made by the advocates for various Warren articles. So you can find uh, potentially more information about Warren articles that we did not cover here today uh, by going to acmi.tv and searching for them. Um, Adam, sorry for to uh, hold you up. No, please uh, explain that. But um, again, uh, we appreciate both the thoroughness and uh, and the completeness of your explanations. Uh, we hope that they are useful for our audience. Um, we will talk to you again, undoubtedly, sometime soon. Um, this has been Town Meeting Matters. Um, I've been talking to our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine. I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.